Hi and welcome to this uh, live broadcast I'm going to have for you today. Uh, and I believe that uh, this uh, uh, encouragement I'm going to have for you today will be an encouragement for you. Uh, and I'm just going to share uh, one scripture with you. Um, and I really believe it, it will be an encouragement for, me, for you. I, that's really on my heart to encourage you. I'm not here to condemn you, to push you down, uh, to, to find fault with you or that you need to, to seek, seek out and try to find all the wrong things they have done and things like that. Uh, I actually want you to find the freedom that actually the Bible is talking about. <laughs> you know, the Bible is actually talking a lot about freedom. Um, um, Jesus is talking about it. Uh, Paul is talking about it. Uh, and, and you can see it several places in the New Testament that Jesus came to give us freedom, to give us liberty. And in Galatians 5.1, um, Paul is talking about this. Stand fast, therefore, in the li liberty that which Christ has made us free. He has made us free. And do not be entangled again into the yoke of bondage. That's the, that's the message. That's the message of Paul. That's the message of Jesus. And so on. But before I go on, let me just say this to you. If you are Norwegian, uh, please feel free to go to my Norwegian site. I have a lot of teaching there. And I usually have like a weekly teaching in Norwegian. Uh, but I used to have. Uh, but I changed it a little bit because uh, uh, it, I, I want to do it more in English too. And I can't do it both in, in, in English and Norwegian at the same week because it's too much work for me. <laughs> too much uh, time consum consuming. So that's why I, I do it uh, in one, uh, usually I do it once uh, every second week. I do it in Norwegian and then once a second, every second week I do it in English. I try to do it like that. And, but sometimes it, it becomes a little bit more in Norwegian uh, and a little bit le less English. But and because I have more people who actually listen to this teaching in Norwegian yeah, still. Uh, but more and more actually finding this, uh, this website and, and also listening to this teaching in English, so that that's encouragement. And also feel free to share this teaching uh, wherever, <laughs> you know, share it on Facebook, share it on YouTube and, and promote it. Um, please, please feel free to do that because it's really on my heart that you will find your freedom. Uh, I have called my website goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com. So please go to my website too and you can find some, uh, some more teaching there about freedom. And also, if you are Norwegian, please follow me in a seminar that I have that is called uh, it means uh, full restoration. Um, so please feel free to, to, to do that if you understand Norwegian. You don't need to be a Norwegian, but if you understand Norwegian, uh, feel, feel, please feel free to go to my website bibliondelistening.com and you can find some information there and there in Norwegian. So please feel free to do that. I have a seminar going on, so please feel free to, to uh, subscribe to my seminar and so on. So, uh, but uh, back to, to the teaching I'm going to, te uh, uh, back to the encouragement I'm going to have for you today. And it's kind of a little bit teaching too. Uh, but uh, I, I just want to share the scripture with you. Because we as Christians, we, we're talking about freedom a lot. <laughs> We're singing about it, we're talking about it, and we're saying, yes, we are, God has set us free. We are free in Christ. We are free. Um, and, uh, and, and we are just the scripture I just read for you in Galatians 5.1. It's, it's, it's quoted so many times. Maybe every Sunday it's quoted somewhere, you know, in, in, in the church. And many times, probably, it's been quoted. But still people are living in bondage. And there's several bondage you, you, you can be into, you know. One side is sin. For sure, sin is, 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 is bondage. It's not freedom. And later on in Galatians here too, he's talking about Paul. He's actually saying, that, yes, you are free. But don't use that liberty, don't use that freedom to go out and sin again or follow after the flesh. Don't do those things you did before because that's not you anymore. So don't follow that, don't, don't let sin reign. Uh, Roman is talking about that, in Romans Paul is talking about that. But that, that let, don't let sin reign in your mortal body anymore. Let, don't, don't let it have control over you anymore. Because that is not freedom. So that, that, that's one side. And then that's probably most, most people know that. Sure, there are some people who kind of live in denial and, and believe that yeah, there is nothing called sin and things like that. I'm not talking about those people. but. Uh, but I believe there is something called sin, and I believe that sin can control us still, if we are, even though we are a Christian. So, uh, so that's, that's for sure one thing that we, 
that will steal our liberty, steal our freedom, is sin. But on the other on, on the other side, we have also something called the law, legalism, or law. And it's uh, actually this scripture I just read for you. It's not about sin. In Galatians 5:1, it's not about sin, but it's actually about law. It was talking about uh, to people who actually wanted to put themselves under law again. And I will come with, uh, I, will, I will have a statement. And the statement is this, that the Christian's main problem is not really sin. The main problem is not really sin. <laughs> and maybe you will react to that. But the main problem is not actually sin. But the main problem is that we want to put ourselves under law again. That I've seen many times, even in my own life. I've seen that the thing about the law, we don't see it sometimes. The law can be so many things. I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments only. You know, in, in, in the Christian circles today, we have made many laws. You shall pray. You shall pray once, uh, one hour every day. Or you should uh, give 10% to, to your church. You, you should do this, you should do that. And you should not sin and you need to do this and that. And there's so many things. You need to read your Bible. You need to confess all your sins since you were five years old. And, and, and there's a lot of law out there. A lot of things we have to do. And, and, and you know, I, I, was, I was sick for many years. And I was always searching for what did I do, I do wrong. If I, if I just do the right thing, then God will heal me. Then God will set me free. I will be free if I just do the right things. So I was, I was trying all the time to do the right things, to, to search for all the sins I had in my life and things like that. I already said that and you don't use the freedom for sin. I'm, I'm not talking, I'm not promoting sin. Just so you, you don't, don't misunderstand me. I don't do that. But I, was, I believe if I just find all the, all, all the wrong things I will, I'm, I'm doing, if I haven't, maybe there's someone I haven't forgiven. Maybe there's someone, some, some, some people I need to go and, 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 and tell about the things I've done against them or something like that. And, and uh, maybe I hurt someone and I need to go, go to them and, and, and so on. And sure, if there are people you, you, have, you know for sure that you have said something bad to you or done something bad to you, I'm sure it's important to go to them. But I will say this too. If, they, if the people don't know that... Know that Maybe it's a, like an attitude you had towards them or something like that. If the people don't know it, don't go and confess it. <laughs> if you have a you know sexual, if you are a man, have a sexual thoughts with with a woman, don't go and tell the woman you know. Sorry, I'm, I'm, can you forgive me because I had some sexual sexual thoughts uh, um, about you? You know, you don't do that. And, and that was one example. But but there is other things too. And sometimes people Christians do that because they are afraid. And I have done it myself too. Because I'm afraid if I, if I don't confess it, then, 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 then God will not forgive me. Because Jesus said that. If, if, you, if you remember, you know, no, even in, in the Lord's Prayer, He's talking about we need to forgive before God can forgive us. It's actually there in, uh, in the Sermon of the Mount. Jesus is actually saying that. And that we're trying to live that. But we, we don't understand that actually that He was talking about the law. Because after that, Jesus is even saying, I'm giving a new commandment to you. As I have loved you, go and love each other. And Paul is, is, is saying this, this several times too. As God has forgiven you, forgive other people. And, and that's the freedom, you know. Remember that God forgave you first. He loved you first. He forgave you first. And you can so forgive other people. There is freedom in forgiveness too. If you hold on to unforgiveness, it's not freedom. It's a sin and, and, and it's, it's, it's holding you back. It's not, yeah, and you will not experience the freedom that, that God has for you. That's for sure. But, but, but God has loved you first. He forgave you first. You don't have to strive and try and, and, and do all of these things. And you, don't, you know, I, I see so many frustrated Christians. And I, I was one of them in many, many years. They try to, to live the Christian life and they try to live a victorious Christian life, but they, they always seem to come short. It always seems that there's more they need to do. 
And I had that feeling for many years, especially when I tried to get, to get healed, as I mentioned. I tried and I tried and I tried, but I felt it was never enough. Until one day, actually, God told me, just know that I love you. Just know that I love you first, loved you first. And that was the thing, that was the key, actually, that healed me, that set me free. That, that the reason why I got my healing, and I didn't get, get my healing uh, during one night. It actually was several years before I, I saw the manifestation of the healing in my body, because I had believed the wrong thing about God. And there is, you know, there's so many people who are trying to search, search for the answer, search for the answer. Why don't don't I get healed, or why don't why do I still struggling struggling with the sin, or or I'm not free. I don't feel free. I know the Bible is talking about freedom, but I don't feel that. And maybe it's not for me. Maybe it's for, for some super Christians who, who, uh, who can, uh, are able to do it. It's maybe it's for just for some, some certain people who is really good at self-control and, and things like that. And sometimes people can, can start to believe that. But, but you know, the people who seem to have it all together, those are mostly the people who are striving the most. They're trying to put up a facade and they're just, just a mask and, and people don't they, they are afraid of what people maybe might think about them so, so they, they hide behind a mask they hide behind who they truly are they are afraid of people finding out who they truly are and how maybe what, what, what their hearts are like and many people are afraid of, the, afraid of themselves and that's why they put up a mask or a facade and, and trying to be something. And maybe outwardly it, it, it can look nice, but on the inside they're struggling a lot. Because they are insecure about who they truly are. You know, all, all bondage can trace back to two things. And the freedom is in only two things. And those are the two things I'm preaching. It's actually something I'm telling almost, you know, Every time, almost every time, I'm, I'm talking about this thing, these two things that you need to get hold of. Hold of. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing it repeatedly because people don't see it. Sometimes I, I, I get a lot of emails and, and, and things like that and, uh, and, or response. Uh, during the years I had, had a lot of response uh, on my website, Norwegian website, also English. Uh, and, and some of this is frustration is, is, is always that, how can I f find my freedom? How can I experience this freedom? And I don't, and even though I'm telling them these this, the, this two things, they don't get it. I know they don't get it. And, I, and sure, sometimes I forget it myself. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm also in a process of renewing my mind. So I still need to remind myself about those two things. But those two things are, who am I <laughs> and who are God? And if you are Norwegian, please follow me on the seminar that I have in Norwegian because I'm talking a lot about these two, two things. And that was the key for my freedom, that was the key for my healing, um, and, and that, was, that was really the, the key, the main key. And, and we have an enemy, and he don't want you to see the truth about who you are and who God is. I believe there is an enemy. He really want to hide that for you. And he really want Christians either to go to one ditch where they just focused on sin uh, or, or, that, or they deny sin in a way, or the other side where they, they focus on, on, on the law uh, and they fall under the law and they, they try all the time trying to, to get rid of, rid of sin themselves. And they fall back, into, back in under the law. But God has set us free from the law. And that's actually Galatians is, talk Galatians is talking about. And the freedom is not in the law. The freedom is, is in one person who fulfilled the law. And the freedom is in a person who loves you. And you need to get hold of that. Who God is. That He truly loves you. And He doesn't look through you through Jesus or something like that. Some Christians believe that. That the kind of God is kind of looking, he's actually mad and he's, 
uh, he actually wants to punish you but but uh, Jesus is kind of a filter and and uh, if it wasn't for Jesus God would have uh, put, yeah, sent you to hell already or something like that it's not like that God loves you because you are you he wanted you to find you and he wanted you to find out who you truly are because if you find out who you truly are you don't have to put up a mask you don't have put on a mask, I mean. You don't have to hide. <laughs> if you truly know who God is, there's so many people who are still hiding, <laughs> like Adam and Eve did. They have still a lot of shame in their life. And law brings shame. If you live under the law, the law will bring shame into your life. And you will try to hide up. You will try to hide to your shame. And you will actually try to cover up your sin too. And put up a mask, have a mask, put on a mask. And you don't want, want other people to see it. Because you are afraid of yourself. And it's because you have, you have a wrong picture of who you truly are, who you are created. God is not after you to punish you, to find fault with you, find all the bad things about you. He's actually wanting to find out what's good about you. Because He created you. And he wants you to find out what's good about you. That's his purpose. That's why God created you. Because he wanted to have fellowship with you. He created something beautiful, something that is very valuable. And, and that's why you were created. You were created for you are created for one purpose only. Is to have fellowship with your creator. It's not all the things you should do for him either. There's so many Christians who are so focused on, on, I need to do something. I need to do something for God in a way. And it's not wrong to do something for God, but, but, but sometimes they, that, that's the true focus. And, and if they don't succeed, they feel miserable. They feel shame. They fall into shame and feel that they are, they are not successful as a, maybe as a missionary or, or, or something like that. Because they can't prove or show to some good results or they can't can show to something. And it's easy to fall into that ditch. I know myself, I, I'm a missionary myself. And it's easy to fall into that and have our identity in what we are doing and the, the results that we have in our lives that we can show to. How many people got saved today <laughs> on a meeting or this campaign that I had or this, this Christmas party we had or, or something like that. How many got saved and, 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 and we have our identity in, in, in the success of what we are doing for God and even in this world you know maybe the success in in in, uh, in what you're doing if you have a lot of money and get a good job and and so on we measure our value in that how much value do I have according to how much I have in my pocket you know how, mu how much or in, in the bank account we think that if, if I have a good education if I just have a, have a higher education God will love me or not God will love me, but I will, I will feel good about myself. It's about, about identity. I think the identity is in money or how successful they are. And sometimes we, even Christians, do the same thing when it comes to like ministry, when it comes to uh, if you're worship leaders or leaders or missionaries or evangelists or or uh, yeah, they just are ordinary church, uh, what to say, attendance or something like that. That, that, that we, sometimes we, we are competing with each other and we, we're trying to do, we want to put up a mask or a facade that we are successful. God is with me. <laughs> but can I tell you, God is with you no matter what. The only thing God is after is your heart. And He, he just wants to know, He wants to say this to you. Don't, do you want to know me? Do you wish to know who I am? Can I show your, my love to you? That's the question that God has for you today. And the freedom is in that. So God, has, God wants you to experience that freedom. And sometimes it, it is a process. To walk in this freedom is a process. And I can't uh, tell you everything here to, to, today. Uh, so please follow me 
if you please follow me on YouTube or uh, Good News for Broken Hearts on Facebook. I have also a page called Good News for Broken Hearts. Uh, go Good News for Broken Hearts on, on Facebook. So find that page on Facebook. And I'll have a website too called goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com. So, uh, so that, is, that is what I had for you today. I don't want to, to, to make it too long. But just remember that you are loved. You are valuable. And you don't, don't need to measure yourself with other people. And you can walk in the freedom that God has set you free to walk in. God has set you free. Don't put yourself under into bondage again. To fear. Don't put yourself to bondage under the law. God is not angry at you if you don't give the 10% or 10% or, or if, you, if you do sins or, or things like that. God is not angry at you. Sure, it, if you do bad things, you will harvest bad things. I don't say that you want to do that. But God is not after you to, to find out what you do, you do, do wrong. He wants you, want you to find out what, who you truly are. What's good with you? What's right with you? That is the thing that God wants you to find out. Not all the things that is wrong with you. Because when you find out who you truly are, the, all of the wrong, the bad stuff will start to fall off. And that's true. That's the truth. That will start to, start to fall off. The bad stuff will start to fall off. If you, if you know, truly know love, what love is, you will not go out and sin. You will actually live in the, in the liberty. Uh, stand fast in the liberty that which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage is actually about the law and trying to do and trying to follow and do your best in a way. Jesus did your best. Did, uh, yeah, what do you say? Jesus did his best. <laughs> and that's why you can rest. <laughs> that was actually something, I, maybe I heard it before, but, but that was something I came up with right now. You know, God, Jesus did his best <laughs> so that you can rest. That was actually a good rhyme. <laughs> so, so remember that. Jesus did his best so that you can rest. You can live in that freedom, in, in that rest that God has for you. That's my desire. That's my desire for you too. That you'll find that rest. That you'll find the freedom that Christ has for you. Because you are, you have that already. You have that freedom already. You just need to open your eyes and see it. And see God for who God is and who you truly are. And as I said, those are the two main things you need to, to focus on. Who God is, who God truly is. There's a lot of negative or bad picture of God out there. You need to find out who truly God is. And you need to find out how did God, God this God create me? Who am I truly? Why am I loved? Not because of all my sins or my failures, but because I, I, I am me. God created you, you, you unique. There is no one like you. You are created unique. And God wants you to find out who you truly are. But first you need to find out who he, who he is. And then you can find out who you are truly are too. That's the first step. If you don't know him, if you don't know God, and you have come, to this, come into this teaching today, and you don't know who God is, I'll challenge you to get to know this God. And there is not a magical formula and, 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 and uh, actually no, not even a prayer. Maybe, you know, there is no prayer in the Bible that you need to they say that you need to pray this prayer and then you become a Christian. Actually, just say, believe. It's all about choosing to believe it and say it. That's the only thing you need to do. It's not a magical formula. But try out. <laughs> try to find out who God is. And, and start to talk to Him. It's called prayer. <laughs> start to talk to Him. And, and, and I, can sure, I can assure you, He'll start to answer you too. Start to talk to Him and He will start to talk to you too. And, and you will experience the freedom that He has for you. So do that. I will challenge you to do that. If you don't believe in God or if you don't have received God, or, or, or if you don't know God, I will challenge you to get to know Him. Get to know God. That's the best thing that can happen in your life. So that was I had for you today. God bless you.